Hey everybody, this is Corey Salty True Floyd and welcome to the Geek Report. This week, there might be a fast food joint that's having a battle royale. We also lost an American anime legend and what and one of our favorite nerds just got himself another gig. All that and more this week on the Geek Report. Hey everybody, we're back. This is the Geek Report powered by Mary Me Media. I'm Corey Salty True Fluid, and of course I'm here with the man, the legend, the shadow, Demon Engine. Yo, what's up everybody? I'm gonna have a new setup very soon. And I'll be able to see my pretty mug once again. So don't worry. All right, now look forward to it. First and foremost, we want to thank you guys for checking in for another installment of the Geek Report. Hopefully you are subscribed, so make sure while you're here, hit that subscription button, and make sure you hit that bell icon so you can get updated on anything and everything that is Amerimi Media. Now, we already know how it goes. It's been another week. There's been another bombardment of news, and me and Demon are going to try and talk about what we can today. Hopefully you guys are here to have a good chance to be informed and entertained. Let's go. Ah, first off, Doc Harris. He was actually the narrator for Dragon Ball Z. He passed away at the age of 76. He was the first and last voice you heard for almost 300 episodes. Now, I'm old. And so when it came to Dragon Ball Z, I know his voice. He 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 literally was the first thing you heard and the last thing you heard at Dragon Ball Z. And of course, even in today's standards, we still would make parodies, especially the last part. Like, what's going on here? Is someone about to get their ass whipped? Tune in next time. Dragon Ball Z. So uh, it's it's very it's very sad hearing this. It's uh man, like it, it it hurts. It hurts a little bit. Demon, my heart, my yeah. heart. Now, of course, he uh, a lot of folks don't know, but when he was hired, he was uh, he was already a, a prominent local DJ. So it wasn't like his voice wasn't known, but now everybody knew it. So mm-hmm. yeah. he uh, that's crazy. Mm-mm-mm. He w- Damn, like Toriyama, Bulma, like it's just All our goats. now. Uh, here's a funny now over Wendy's, they got a Krabby Patty meal, and it comes with a, it's a burger with some sort of Krabby Patty style sauce and a frosty with like pineapples and some shit on the bottom. Now Here's the weird part. The creator of SpongeBob, Steven Hellenberg, when it came to merchandising, the one thing he really did never wanted to do was a burger deal. He never wanted to do a food. Now, yeah, he did have like he did have like McDonald's Happy Meal toys at one point, but he never wanted to have a SpongeBob meal. Despite the fact that the character he created worked at a fast food joint, he hated fast food. That's on him. He shouldn't never. <laughs> he shouldn't never made an iconic show. It was bound to happen. We're at the age where we can spend our adult money and force corporations to do things that we want because you know they want our adult money. And yeah, really, I'm upset. I missed it. I really did plan to get a fucking crack about it. But at the same time, one of my friends worked at Wendy's, and oh, she said that shit was like a battlefield. 
And that and that brings me to the uh, the other part of this. Fast food workers, I feel like whenever it comes to these these collaborations and promotions, I feel like fast food workers should be allowed to punch at least two people a day during these collaborations. Because I remember the Szechuan sauce fiasco with McDonald's and people were showing their entire ass to these fast food workers who aren't they they're not they're not multimillionaires. They're not make, they're not making big figures. But then they have to deal with these people and their per, and their bullshit. I, I like I I for the for the Szechuan sauce, I distinctly remember a video of what appeared to be a grown man having a temper tantrum on a McDonald's counter. I I just want to know. I feel as though there had to be at least one crash out moment. Oh, I'm sure that had, I, I'm, I'm where someone where someone came in close to talk closing and then said or rev up those fryers. Wow. Yeah, all right. <laughs> they were five minutes later, they were yelling, Oh my leg. I listen, I don't this is this is one of the few times I feel bad for folks at fast food. And I it used to be one of y'all, but the fast food, the way fast food is, it is like y'all y'all don't get paid enough to do a whole bunch of shit. And then you gotta deal with stuff like this. So Thank God, thank God they did make a crusty crab pizza. Oh god, that probably tried to be the next fucking thing. Hopefully it'll be on Pizza Hut. No one likes Pizza Hut. Uh, Guess we uh, never gonna get sponsored by Pizza Hut. <laughs> Second to hear this shit. <laughs> I mean, but it's true. Most Pizza Huts closed down. Right. It's like, listen, don't get mad at me for telling the truth. Y'all been out pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no one out pizza's the hut. Bitch, I beg to differ. <laughs> Y'all been out pizza. Papa John's Domino's came out fucking swinging. And then Caesar's came in with the cheap shot for cheap pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't lying. Hang in there, fast food workers. Because, you know, shit's rough. What's our next one, Dean? I'm about, I'm about to end up taking a trip. Maryland. Huh? About to end up taking a trip to Maryland to a pizza place just because they have the 28 inch pizza. Shit, you don't even have to travel far for that. We got 28 inch pizzas in Philly. I don't trust my folks. <laughs> All right, uh, so anywhere. fast food workers and <laughs> are the ones I trust. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, y'all. So Dragon Ball Sparking Zeros come out, and a lot of people are bitching and saying that it's difficult. So a game dev made a game dev made a tweet, and they. They they suggested a great idea. Just go to the settings and change the game difficulty, motherfucker. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> First off, it's a fighting game. You gotta get good. That's just facts. You know what? If the, if more and more people bitch bitch about it being too hard, the next one has to be souls. Like, no difficulty setting. <laughs> But you can't have a souls like fighting game. Wait. No difficulty settings. Fight for your fucking life. Could you have a souls like fighting game? Technically, yeah. Be fucked up though. Hey, firm software. <laughs> <laughs> the game won't tell you shit. 
<laughs> it would be it would, yo. It would be a crueler. It would be a way crueler version of uh of um um soul uh soul. What was it soul caliber? Yeah, soul caliber. I ain't gonna tell you shit. Here's some more. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some more to some shit that you don't matter. I ain't gonna tell you shit. Fight for your life. Have have we really gotten to a point where people forgot that you can change like settings in a game? Yeah. Really? That's that's shocking. Cause like I mean I'm I still have games where I'm allowed to like some games today. If you pick a setting, that's it. You can't go back. But now there are games where it's like, yeah, you could change the settings in the middle of the game. Oh, you get your ass whooped. Yeah, all right. I want your <laughs> money, so you can drop, we'll drop the settings a little bit. But I'm telling you now, wh- whoever is whoever's complaining about the game being hard, I just assume they never intend to play versus mode because you're bitching at the CPU. Wait to wait till you get into a, <laughs> what the FGC gonna be like? Did this man just say he played this on easy? <laughs> and you want to fight me? Whose man's is this? Welcome to another exciting episode of One Sided. <laughs> They're going to be like, yo, nigga, I think I just invented a new infinite combo. Let's go to the next one, Demon. All right, so Space Marine 2 te- uh, dev, Tim Willis, he, 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 I mean, he didn't really, it's not a super pluralism, but I just like to hear, I like to hear when a dev speaks his mind out loud and proud. He says that a lot of big, big budget games fail because they they try and do too much. They look at some other games that, that, that come out and they think, hey, we've got to do that. Let's add this. Then next thing you know, they lose focus of the game's core and what actually makes the game fun. And yes, that happens so many times. Like, hell, we've just seen we've just seen some some big bombs this year that got away from the core point. Even though Concord, we'll just never know what the fuck the point that was, to that was. The Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. It was like y'all, it was like y'all just watched another game, just like this one, crash and burn. Do y'all really think it's gonna be different for y'all? Unbelievable. Like that's it, like demon, that shit still gets to me. Like y'all watched y'all like y'all y'all actually watched what happened to Gotham Knights and said, Yeah, we'll be all right. Like I I yo, I feel like there had to be one game dev there just looking at his computer like It's a paycheck. <laughs> it's like, uh, like I'm like I'm gonna get fired for for something I ain't even do this time. <laughs> I just laugh for fun. Uh, game devs. So, <laughs> one of our favorite nerds, Henry Cavill. Apparently, he's been casted in a live action adaptation of Voltron. That's going to be uh, through Amazon, uh, Amazon, MGM Studios. Mind you, this is already the second project he's on for Amazon. The other project being the 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 Warhammer 40k show, starring and produced by Henry Cavill. So my man just keep getting dubs. I can't wait for this. Yeah, but I, yo. Henry Cavill's that type of dude that whenever he wins, you get to see who loses. <laughs> <Those are Henry. laughs> it does, because like we're we're about to watch him kill two great performances. 
and then we're gonna watch the, the we're gonna watch the third season of The Witcher burn at the stake. I want to fall, I want to Warhammer. Yo, mm-hmm. War, yo, because uh, yo, that Warhammer joint is gonna be lit. Because th- for for y'all who don't know, <coughs> the lore behind Warhammer is some of the wildest shit you will ever hear. Like you, like you think Fallout is crazy. Fallout, yo, Fallout in comparison to Warhammer is like amateur hour. Like Fallout, yo, Fallout is like a paradise. Like Demon, if you, you had, if you had, with, you had to deal with all the fucking uh, these horrifying creatures that come in fucking numbers on top of. These overpowered motherfuckers you fight with having disputes and frequently throwing tantrums at one another. Don't forget that the space marines, there, there, there's a good chance they've been fighting for like 200 years. So you can't tell or, them shit. Or, or more. Some niggas been on the battlefield for thousands of years. You can't tell that motherfucker shit. He knows what works. Right. It's been working for the last three millennia. <laughs> but, seriously, y'all, but seriously, y'all. But seriously, y'all, when it comes out, it is going to be an absolute treat. Let's go to the next one. All right, so actor Aaron Pierce, he's got casted to play Jon Stewart in the upcoming Lanterns project. And I think it's cool, but apparently there's an other side of the internet that's mad that he's light-skinned. Because Jon Stewart is traditionally a dark-skinned character. And... Oh, it, it's one of those things where I'm just like, we does it really matter? I mean, I doesn't. It does matter, but at the same time, look, it is what it is. Deal with it. Am I correct? Like, like, is this an issue for you, Demon? No. Right. I, I, I'm just like, I get it. He's 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 not the same tone, but you know, we'll be all right. right. I'm pretty sure someone on the other side of the spectrum is going to be like, "What if Blade was light skin?" I'm like, "All right, that would probably look fucking weird." But look. first off, just it, look in the yo in this side by side alone, he, John Stewart look a little light skin, like. You could tell that the light emanating from the other side of his body, like I don't care if he light skin as long as he gets the job done and be a better lantern than Hal Jordan. <laughs> don't like him. <laughs> you really don't like him. <laughs> he unnecessarily cocky and he a diddler. So what are your feelings on Guy Gardner? Let's not talk about Guy Gardner. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, this is all... There's a lot. I'm still excited to see this show. I'm pretty sure you are too. If you're not, if if you disagree with what we're talking about here, talk about the comment section. Dean, let's go to the next one. Oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be funny. So, I've been watching the show Penguin. It's supposed to be a limited series uh, that takes place a week after the Batman, and it is awesome TV. But another corner of the internet is mad that they casted Colin Farrell 
instead of a fat actor. Go touch some guys now, right? Right, and it, it, like, yeah, and, and that's what it feels like. I'm like, yo, first off, there's a finite amount of fat actors that could probably act this at this caliber. Two, who did you want? Kevin from The Office? I mean... That could have been a thing, probably. But Colin Farrell does a great job. The, the, the visual effects and makeup department do an outstanding job here. Demon, you know what Colin Farrell looks like, right? No. No, you need no. You need to see what Colin Farrell looks like. Like you, you need to see what this man looks like on a daily basis, and then look at this photo. Like <laughs> here, I'm about to, I'm about to sit, I'm about to send, send it to you right now. Oh, yeah, that's what Colin Farrell looks like on on his everyday shit. Now, so you can't. First off, it, he is unrecognizable. He is. He is. I'm not gonna lie. He is because looking at the penguin, looking at his him as penguin is making my skin crawl. Yeah, like like you couldn't you couldn't tell me that was the same person. Listen, I this this is not a real argument. Y'all need to go touch some grass. <coughs> that's that, that's that's such a funny touch argument. Some grass, let the let the sun hit your skin. Like, and the funny thing is, I bet you this argument wasn't even started by a fat person. Possibly. <laughs> All right, so uh, I've been seeing circulations of uh, of this poster. It looks like there is a conversation happening involving Scary Movie Six. Uh, two big things. One, all the other Scary Movies were executive produced by Harvey Weinstein. So this will be the first one with them away from it. More importantly, though, and the only way I would ever even support this, are the Wayans brothers coming back to do Scary Movie 6? Because for those who don't know, uh, Scary Movie 1 and 2 were done by Keenan Ivory Wayans, and of course it starred, it also produced it, and then you had, of course, Marlon, Sean, and Kim playing respective parts. But then when it came to them asking for more money, um, they got pushed out of the way and they just continued the series without them. And that was the, of course, the large quality drop. And with everything we know going on in the current zeitgeist and Marla Wayans becoming very verbal in recent Club Shay Shay interview about what happened with Scary Movie, this would be a great return to form for the Wayans family. Because, well, in, in my eyes, they're they're their black celebrity royalty. Demon, do you you remember In Living Color? Might have been too young for that. Yeah. You remember it? Cool. Because th that was a that was a big movement in entertainment, especially for black entertainment. And it was such a power move and other channels weren't doing it like they were doing it. And then they made the bold they made the bold move of doing a Super Bowl halftime comedy special. Because back in the day, the the Super Bowl halftime show was some old bullshit. It would be random marching bands at one and at one point it was like figure skating in the middle of a football field, which sounds just as dumb as you think. But they made this Super Bowl special where they took the entire audience away from the Super Bowl. And most of them never went back to watching the Super Bowl that year. So the Super Bowl, they was like, "Yeah, we gonna make we gonna make halftime show be a big thing." 
and it got and the, and of course they got the biggest artist at the time to do it, which was Michael Jackson. Mm. And that's why your halftime show is the way it is. And this year it will be Kendrick Lamar. Put some respect to Michael Jackson's name, motherfuckers. Which reminds us, if you go to our Patreon, which we'll have a link to here, we actually did some reaction videos to some of Michael Jackson's biggest music videos. I had a good time, especially with that Steve Harvey mustache dude that got shot. <laughs> and are you okay? Are you okay, kid? You been hit by yeah, I yeah. Still, I still don't even know why he left once the military showed up. Clearly, you can handle them niggas. <laughs> you did all that without the Tommy gun. Imagine you did you do with the Tommy gun. Right. I think it's just the fact that he dragged he dragged everybody else into the situation. Like <laughs> we're being shot by the cops. Nigga, who was we? <laughs> uh, okay, so speaking of Kendrick, I knew they had a project coming out with Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park. And but I didn't know exactly what it was, but now I know I heard the premise. Apparently, it's about a black a black kid playing a slave reenactor at a living history museum. While he's there, he finds out that his white girlfriend's family wants to own his. First off, that's funny as shit. That's funny. That's that like that is a you know that's a yo know, that's fucked up. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> like that. You know that. Like that's fun. That's a, you, you. Like you can't you can't even argue. That's real fun. <laughs> like like really. Lamar and South. How's that going to play? I think it's going to play good because, like, look, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, they, their wit has only gotten sharper over the years. Like, yes, the comedy tends to be really, really crass. But the commentary and satire, it, 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 it's vicious. Like, like their, like their satire and comedy is so vicious. They knew how much it could sway people, so they, they're, they're not doing anything until after the election. Think about that shit. Like, yeah. like literally, like literally, they, they were like, "Listen, it's not even about the money right now. It's about something really serious going on." So. I think yo, know, I like I think it's I think it's gonna be wild. I really do. Plus, I think that yo, know, first off, you're gonna have Trey Parker, Matt Stone, and Kendrick Lamar. Please tell me they write a song together. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh. Cause I cause I just remembered the song they when they parodied Kanye West, Make a Love to a Fish. Oh. I'm sorry, I got you excited. Sorry, Demon. Let's go to the next one. Good. That's gonna be funny. So, a reboot to The Running Man has been announced, and Edgar Wright, director of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, uh, just a, a bunch of really awesome movies. He's gonna be attached to direct. Now. This, all right, this is a great idea because we've seen other movies try to copy The Running Man with a future dystopian and brutal blood sports, our casual entertainment, 
Uh, this is this this book adaptation. That's where it kind of started. So it would be good to see a revamped version of it. Now, don't get me a re- no. Don't get me wrong. The original with Arnold Schwarzenegger here is a stone cold classic. But I've actually been very verbal on this, even on this show a few other times. I said a reboot is needed. And I think Edgar Wright would be the one to do it properly and not be afraid to go all out crazy. Because this is the same man who actually directed Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. A movie that I'm pretty sure in anyone else's hands, they would have dialed down the wackiness. But instead, he leaned in. So... Demon, the, have you have you seen the original Running Man? Of course, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, I, yeah, because because I, I I knew you liked some Stephen King stuff, but I wasn't sure which which was which. I've always imagined this being done, but the stalkers were like murderous WWE wrestlers. Like Brock, like. Like, if you gave Brock Lesnar a 50 cal gun to shoot, because we all know he's physically built to do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you. <laughs> Plus, just the idea of Brock Lesnar hunting people for blood just uh, seems like something that might be something he does once a year. Like, <laughs> like because <laughs> I put a lot of thought into this <laughs> because that man because that man does like to go hunting for like moose because he and it's like he mainly goes after them because mooses are bigger than him and he likes the challenge. <laughs> yeah, I I I can see it. I see Brock oh, Lesnar wow. like once a year he hunts human. Crafty prey. <laughs> like you just you just see him you just see him out in the woods track <laughs> tracking. He's like mm-hmm. pissing themselves over here. It's good. It's real good. Uh we got one we got we have one clip to show. Uh Demon, if you can pull it up. I thought this was really cool. I wanted to show this off. Hold on. Huh? Say hold on. All right. Let me shut up. Y'all better make sure y'all subscribe to Mary Me Media. That's that's for damn sure. Choker fully do that piece of shit. So upset. I so I, I was so so upset with that movie, guys. You just don't understand. What you should do is check out my review for it on American 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 American. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm about to say what what happened there. <laughs> it's not far on the sharing over. What'd you say? It was not fond of sharing on it. <laughs> Awkward. How? It's so weird. Here we go, guys. What you're what you're looking at here? This is actually a a broad a Broadway play of Attack on Titan. Taking place in New York this week for um, for New York Comic Con, or is that this week? Or is that next? It's one of those weeks. But this is like a press viewing of it, and I'm not gonna lie, 
It looks kind of cool. Of course, for music wise, right. you can't. Music wise, you can't hear it, but it's a it's an interesting show, and it's definitely something I would check out myself if given the chance. I just want to know if it would have the same ending. Anime made it to Broadway. Uh, I mean, shouldn't shouldn't surprise us. Over in Japan, they already been doing like all that, like to the teeth stage plays of some of their animes, like Spirit of the Way. So, listen, put some good music behind it and some great dancing. Plus, listen, after we did, after we did that weird Spider Man on Broadway that just didn't work. We need another country to show us how to do it right. Yeah. Yo, rem- yo, remember that? Yo, I ended up seeing like half of that musical. It was so messed up. And and the Spider-Man got hurt when we went to go see it. Like they really just had they, they just had so much going on. It was like Spider Man, something in the dark, uh, something. I forget. <laughs> but listen, guys, that that was the geek report for this week. I want to thank you guys for for checking us out. We appreciate you. We hope you were informed and entertained. And one more time, make sure you guys subscribe to Ameri Me Media right here on YouTube. Make sure you're hit that bell icon to get alerted to anything and everything from Ameri Me Media. And while you're here, make sure you check out AmeriMeMedia.com. That's A-M-E-R-I-M-E-M-E-D-I-A. Amerime Media, we're going to have a link in the description below. Demon Engine, it's been a pleasure as usual. I will be seeing you. Yeah. And I, and I will be seeing you. <laughs>